everyone and thank you for tuning in. Today we will actually do a cowl together to match this beautiful hat. So this is worked up into double crochets right in here and then at the bottom here will be front post and back post double crochets. For this tutorial you will need some worsted weight yarn and this is Yarnspirations Karen Jumbo in the color of Peacock. And it's beautiful. I just love the multicolored effect that it has. It's worth to weight four. The recommended hook size is an H. It's 100% ac acrylic and it's 12 ounces and 340 grams. And this is 595 yards also 544 meters. Now, you'll also need two crochet hooks. I recommend that you get an eye hook, which is a 5.5, and also a five millimeter hook, which is an H hook. Now, for the experts out there or intermediate crocheters, you may not want to start with the larger size hook, which is the eye. But in order to do our crochet rows, I wanted to make it easier for us to work in the bumps in the back of the stitches into our foundation chain. We will be making a foundation chain of 100. So you make your slip stitch and you'll make 100 chains. One, two, three, four, Go ahead and finish up and then I'll meet you at the end and then we can work in the last stitch. Now that we have 100 chains, we are going to switch from our I hook to our H hook. And then we want to make sure that this whole chain is straight. Make sure it's not, it doesn't curl or turn on you because we will be working around so when you come to the end, we are going to make a slip stitch. Just put it in there. Just slide it right through and just make sure when you go all the way around that all your stitches are facing the same way. We are going to chain three One, two, three, and we are going to work in these back humps there. Can you all see that? I'm going to work in the back. So you have to make sure that we have them all turned right. You see? This is the correct way. So we'll yarn over. And then we're going to insert our hook here. And then we'll yarn over. And we'll pull up a loop, yarn over. We'll pull through two and pull through two. You see that next hump? See that? That's what we're going into, yarn over. You'll insert your hook, yarn over. Pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. And then you're gonna do this all the way across. Yarn over, insert your hook, right in that raised bump, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull, and you're going to yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yarn over. Insert your hook, 
yarn over, pull up a loop, and you pull through two, and you pull through two. And then you just continue all the way down. Now that we've come to the end, we are going to slip stitch. And this is how round one should look. You want to slip stitch in the top of this chain here. Like so. Then you'll chain three. One, two, three. And we're going to start with a back post double crochet. So we'll yarn over. You put your, your hook in the back. Work it around that post. Pull up a loop. Pull through two. And pull through two. We'll do a front post double crochet. Yarn over. Insert your hook. Bring it around the back into the front. That post. You pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. Back post, yarn over. See how I'm placing my hook? Like so. Pull up a loop and pull through two, pull through two. If you're not really sure how to do the front and back post double crochet, look in the description box. I will have a link there to refresh your memory or just for beginners. Okay, front post double crochet. One back post double crochet. One front post double crochet. One back post double crochet. One front post double crochet. One back post double crochet. Let's take a look at our work. It's coming along nicely. This is how it should look so far. And here's the hat bottom of the hat we are going to mimic this design so this is row two and we're going to do several rows to create a nice cowl okay one front post double crochet oh I'm going to do that again There we go. And one back post double crochet. And we are going to continue along doing one front post and one back post double crochet alternating. And then when we get to the end of round two, I'll come back and we'll start on row three. We have just completed row two and we are going to put our hook in the top of this stitch here make a slip stitch like so chain three one two three and this is the start of row three we'll do one back post double crochet One front post double crochet. One back post double crochet. Come on, get in there. One front post double crochet. And we'll do this all the way around for rows three and rows four. Now you should have completed rows three and row four. And now we are going to put our hook right in here in this stitch, just like so. Do a slip stitch and then we'll chain three. One, two, 
three. And now this is the start of row five. So we'll do a back post double crochet, front post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post double crochet. Back post double crochet, front post double crochet, back post double crochet, and front post double crochet. And continue that pattern all the way around. Now that we are at the end of row five, we are going to insert our hook at the top of this stitch here, do a slip stitch, and we're going to chain three. One, two, three. This will be our last row of back post and front post double crochets. Okay. Already did a back post and a front post. See there? Back post double crochet. And a front post double crochet. Back post double crochet. And a front post double crochet. Back post double crochet. And a front post double crochet. And we will continue this all the way around. And I'll meet you back up at the end of row six. Now that we've come to the end of row six, we are going to do a slip stitch in the top of this chain here, right where that back post double crochet is, and we are going to switch hooks. We are going to switch to the eye hook, the 5.5, and then we'll chain three. One, two, three. And in this row, we are going to do double crochets, one double crochet in each stitch across. And so we'll go right into that stitch there, right next to that chain three, put a double crochet. The yarn split there. And we are going to do five rows of these double crochets. So I'll do a few with you. And then I'll have you work on your double crochets, your five rows, and then we'll come back. I'll come back at the end of the fifth row. We have just completed row 11, and this is what it should look like right now. We have a total of five double crochet rows, and we are going to do a total of eight before we start working on the back post and front post double crochet. So we're going to chain three. This is row 12. Go right in there, make a double crochet, and one double crochet in each stitch around. I hope you're enjoying this pattern as much as I am. It's coming along very nicely. I'm really excited about it. I figured I would do a few double crochets with you.
Isn't that beautiful? It's coming along nicely. I will see you at the end of row 14. We have just come to the end of row 14 and we are going to go ahead and make a slip stitch to the top of that stitch and we are going to switch crochet hooks back to the H because we will be starting our front post, back post, double crochets, chain three, one, two, three. We will start with the back post double crochet. And a front post double crochet. Got a little caught up there. Back post double crochet. And a front post double crochet. Back post double crochet. Front post double crochet. Back post double crochet. And front post double crochet. So you'll do this for rows 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And I'll meet you at the end of row 19. Now that we've come to the end of row 19, we are going to do a slip stitch on top of that stitch right there. And then we are going to cut our yarn, fasten off, and then you'll need your darning needle so that you can weave in your ends. One thing I did want to show you is, now that we have the finished piece, if you are concerned about counting the stitches, in between, you can always take these two ends together, and if they meet up just like this, just like so, you have the same number of rows on each side. So you, you have to look very closely right in between here. You will see there's one, two, three, four, five. So that's five rows right there. And the same here. You will see the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. That's why you know that you've had the same amount on each side. So, let's take our darning needle, thread it, there we are, and I am just going to go back and forth through the different stitches. Some people like to just go along this side here and continue on. But what I am going to do is take this down the stitches a few times. And right here, I am going to go down inside, back and forth here, down this side here. And then I'm going to come back up. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, therefore, when it's being worn and or washed, it would be hard for this end to come out. Just like so. Maybe we can go down a little bit more. There are some pieces that really don't require you to do this, this, but I feel more comfortable if I do it with this particular cow. Can you all see that? Yeah. 
And if you want, you can go back down one more time and, and cut the end off, just like so. You cut that end, and don't forget the one on the other end that we have. It's hiding from me. So we'll have to weave this in. Some people do this after a couple of rows when they first start their project. Feel free to do so. But I was really excited about getting this video started so you all can start on this pattern. So just weave it back and forth. That's why I always make sure that I leave a long enough tail so then I can weave my ends in, tuck them in nicely. So I'm gonna go through here, down this way, like so. And this, this right here is just to show the beginners how to weave their ends in. you like you can take this right on back up like so just like that and then cut the end I also want to share with you that I did use the eye hook but for the intermediate and um, expert crocheters you don't have to switch from the H hook to the I hook. You could, for the whole pattern, use this H hook. And the reason why I did it is because I wanted to give the body of the cow more fluidity and movement. So I didn't want the, the piece to feel constricted in any way, just like the, the peacock. And a little tidbit with the peacock is, you know, it, it symbolizes vision, royalty, spirit, spirituality, awakenness, and watchfulness. Let me get this yarn out of the way. But this is the matching hat that I will bring to you soon.